Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Mason African Motives, still working on uh, industrial electronics N2. So in this case, we've got uh, the question, which was um, on AC theory from June 2022. So we are going to focus on the question, on this question that we had. Um, on this one, we are given that in an RC circuit, uh, let's see what we have. We are given an RC circuit the phase angle between the total current and voltage is uh, 68 degrees. Uh, so we are given, uh, in this case, the phase angle that is our theta, that's uh, 68 degrees. Uh, the circuit has a resistance of 10 ohms. So we've got a resistance of 10 ohms, a frequency of 50 hertz, so frequency of 50 hertz. The current across the resistor, which is the current across this resistor, is equivalent to six amps. So take note, this is an RC series circuit. All right, the uh, first question was for you to calculate the value of the capacitor. Uh, for us to have this value of the capacitor, we can actually have a sketch of the diagram that we are given. Take note, it's an RC circuit, so we can just have our sketch here. A resistor. We have got the capacitor. These are in series. And take note, that's an AC uh, supply that we have with um, 50 hertz supply. OK, that is uh, what we have. And the current, take note, the current flow on this resistor is the total current. Because the series circuits, we know that current is the same. So we've got 6 amps. We have got 10 ohms. Then we do not know the value of the capacitor in this case. OK. So what can we do from this information? The information that we had was so, so limited, but we have a lot of things that we can work from. Uh, this is, let me just take the question properly. This is 2.11, okay, 2.11. So remember that we also are given the phase angle of 68 degrees. There is something that we understand. It's a capacitive circuit whereby we know that if we are to draw the phase up, we are supposed to have something like this. We can work from capacitance, from vectors, but since we are given uh, resistance, we can actually have our XCC from that because we are going to have a diagram like this. Remember your phaser diagram, guys. This is where we have your resistance, and our resistance is 10 ohms. Here is where we have our XC. We do not know this XC, but the angle between, we know that it's 68 degrees. Okay, what's the relationship between the phase angle, the resistance, and the capacitive reactance? We actually have uh, from this diagram, that's our opposite, and that's our adjacent. So definitely we are going to use tan from tor adjacent over uh, uh, opposite of adjacent. So we actually know that tan theta is equivalent to the opposite over the adjacent. That is the opposite is your XCC adjacent is the resistance. So we actually know that tan theta is equal to XCC over R, okay? So with this information, it can help us to find XCC. By finding XCC, it is now easier for us to find C, which is the capacitance. Okay, so let's substitute the information that we are given uh, in this case and see what you're going to have. So tan of the angle, which is 68 degrees, is equal to the XCC, which is the opposite, over the resistance, which is 10 ohms. So from there, we can calculate XC. Cross multiply, one times XC, that's XC, if we multiply here, and 10 times tan 68 is 10 tan 68 degrees. Okay, so that's XC is going to be 10 times tan 68, which is 10 tan 68 degrees, which is something like 24, 7, Seven five one. It's going to be twenty four comma seven five. Because eight is going to change. This one is going to be one. So it's uh, twenty four comma seven five one ohms. Okay. So like I was saying, if we have got uh, reactants, which is the capacitive reactants, it's easier for us to find C. Uh, since we know that uh, C is equal to we have got this formula from XCC, C is equivalent to one over two pi F X C. So it depends how we are given on your formula sheet. Sometimes they might give you this formula direct. So here, I'm just going to cross-check the way we were given these uh, formulas. 
so that I can explain from there, from your formula sheet. All right, this part we are given XC uh, here. We have got uh, XCC, we are given it as XCC. So you just have to make uh, C to be the subject from our XC. Okay, so take note, we are given it as XC. XC is one over two pi FC. So you can cross multiply XCC times two pi FC is equal to one. So to find capacitance, we divide by two pi F XC both sides, or two pi F XC both sides. So this can cancel, you remain with capacitance. So that is the formula that we have written uh, here. Is then this the one that we are going to use? Let me show you here. All right, so from that formula that we have, we can actually substitute the value so that we can have our capacitance since we want to calculate the capacitance of the circuit of the circuit. So that is capacitance is going to be one over two pi times the frequency. Uh, take note the frequency here is 50 hertz. So we multiply by 50 times XCC. We got our XCC is 24,751. Okay, so that's it. We have got our capacitance. So from the formula, uh, from this, let's see what we are going to have from our calculator. One over two pi. Two pi, you can use the value of pi or you can use your calculator, the value of pi on your calculator times 24,751. That's 1,286, whatever that we have times 10 to the power minus four. But knowing that our capacitance actually is supposed to be in microfarads, okay. So microfarads means times 10 to the power minus six, that's microfarad. So for you to convert to microfarad, you multiply by the opposite sign, not minus six, but by 10 to the power six. So we are going to multiply this answer by 10 to the power of six. If we multiply by 10 to the power of six, we are going to have 128,605. So this is 128, 128,605. Now your answer is in microfarads. So that was the simplification for us to have the capacitance of the circuit. We had to work with that angle, which was uh, one of uh, uh, the questions that we can, we need to work from uh, the phaser, uh, from the phaser diagram with the phase angle. That was uh, the, the part. Okay, 2.12, we are now asked to calculate the total impedance of the circuit. So how can we have the total impedance of the circuit? Take note, we've got the resistance and we've got XL, XCC from this part. Uh, let's just write our XCC here. That was 24. So our XCC is equal to 24,751. Okay, knowing that if we have got uh, the resistance and XCC, we can actually calculate uh, the total impedance because Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XCC squared. The, we are just working with two uh, things here. So you just have to add. If, if we have an inductor, then we have to subtract. But in this case, we just have to square. So it's the square root of R squared resistance. That is 10 squared plus XCC, which is 24,751. So this is 751 squared. Okay, so that's it. We can have the total impedance of the circuit. The square root of 10 squared plus 10 comma, not 10, not 10, but 24. This is 24,751, 24,751 squared. We are going to obtain 26,695. Seven is going to change this into five. So it's 26,695 uh, ohms. This is impedance, which is measured in ohms, just like resistance and others. Okay, the voltage across the capacitor on 2.13. We now need the voltage across the capacitor. Since uh, we have the current uh, which is flowing into the circuit, this is the current, the total current. It makes uh, easier. It makes us easier for us to calculate the voltage across the capacitor because once we've got a current and the reactance or resistance, we can find the voltage. So we are going to have something like this. Voltage across the capacitor is the current times 
the inductive reactants, of which the current that we are referring is the total current, because in series, current is the same. Remember, we are talking about in series, whereby current is the same. So if current is the same, we are just going to use that current as it is, and our current in this case is six amps. So it is going to be six amps multiplied by XCC. Remember your XCC is 24,751. So you're going to multiply to 24,751. So that's it, we have got our voltage. Okay, so from this six times 24,751, is going to give us 148,506. So that's 148,506 volts. That's the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, let's see that the part 2.14, the voltage across the resistor is still the same thing. Uh, the voltage across the resistor is VR, which is just the total current times the resistance. So the total current does not change, which is six amps times the resistance. Remember our resistance in this case was 10 ohms. From the diagram here, we've got 10 ohms. Uh, so we just have to multiply this by 10. So which is 60 volts. Okay, I think this one is direct. Then the total voltage of the circuit, whenever you're dealing with AC theory, the total voltage is always the phasor sum. So it is referred as the phasor sum whereby uh, we can apply this formula. This is 2.15. So the phasor sum of V is equal to the square root. We have got resistance and capacitance in this case. So it is going to be VR squared plus VC squared. So that's the phasor sum for the voltage, the total voltage. All right, which is the square root of VR squared, that's 60 squared, plus VC squared. Do we have VC? Yes, we calculated our VC here. We got our VC 148,506. So we are going to square 148. This is 148,506, uh, 506 squared. Okay, so by doing this, we are going to have the total voltage for the circuit. So we've got the square root of 60 squared plus 148,506 squared. And this is going to give us 160, 168, 1687. But seven is going to change this eight into nine. So we are going to have it as 160, 169 volts. So that is uh, the total voltage for the circuit, which is the phasor sum of the given uh, voltages. All right, let's check the other part of the question, which is 2.2. Uh, make Fully labeled take note here. These are fully labeled waveforms. So we are talking about waveforms of current and voltage. We are working with current and voltage of each of the following circuits. The 2.21 is a pure inductor circuit. So we know that if we are dealing with a, a pure inductor, uh, voltage actually leads current or current legs voltage. Uh, we can take this one from uh, Sivu like this. Okay, we are working with the uh, inductance. In this case, we're going to work with this inductance here. So voltage leads current. So that is what is important in this one. Okay, so that's it, 2.21. Uh, so we've got a 2.21, that's a pure inductor, this one. So as I said, voltage is going to lead current. So current, it's always your reference from zero to 360. Remember, this will be zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. Uh, that is what you're going to have. But knowing that voltage is, is leading, so voltage is going to be on top. So voltage is going to start at one, uh, somewhere there, uh, to 90 at zero. 180 at negative one, 270, 360 at something like that. All right, so that is what we are going to have at the end. Uh, so this is actually for current and this is for voltage. So this is going to be for current and this is going to be for uh, the voltage. Okay, so that was it. Then a pure resistor, for a pure resistor, we know that voltage and current are in phase. So if voltage and current are in phase, Therefore, we are going to have our diagram like this. It is going to be in phase. 
So we have got our current the same way that we had them. Uh, so this can be your current and the voltage is just on top now, just like this. Following the same path, the same points. So it's going to follow the same path, uh, the same points here, down, then the same point. So it's actually in phase. So this is going to be your voltage. That's uh, for a purely, a pure resistor. Then a pure capacitor uh, from our CVU here, we are now dealing with a capacitor. So for a capacitor here, we can see that current leads voltage. So if current leads voltage, which means we are actually saying voltage legs current, that is the condition. All right, so if, uh, if that is the way, therefore we are going to have our diagram like this. So this is 2.22 current is going to lead. So if our current is leading, remember your current is always the one that you refer as the reference. So voltage is going to lag. So we are going to have our current, then our voltage is going to lag, which means it's going to start from this below, that point, that point, like that. Okay, so this is going to be the voltage now for the capacitor. So the voltage is lagging, the current is leading. So that's what we actually had uh, from this person on AC theory and it was actually a total of 20 marks from this recent paper, which was written in uh, June 2022 for Industrial Electronics N2. From Maison African Motives, working on Industrial Electronics N2 till we meet again.